Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for this session. We're going to be taking a deep dive into tabs together. And you may be familiar with tabs already. If you're not, no worries at all. We're going to go through all of the basics and you'll be very familiar by the end of today's session. So to introduce myself, my name is Paige Rossi. I'm a programmer writer on the developer content team here at DocuSign. And so I work on code examples and other types of developer documentation that you can find on our DocuSign Developer Center. And a quick look at today's agenda. We're going to be talking about tabs, like I mentioned. I'll define what those are. We'll be talking about how to use tabs with the DocuSign eSignature REST API, and specifically what, what the tabs look like in your JSON request body. We'll be talking about how to position tabs in your documents, and then I'll be doing a code demo, and we'll leave some room for Q&A. So what are tabs? To start us off, I'll define tabs. Sometimes we call tabs tags or fields. It can get a little confusing, but when we're talking about the API, we are usually using the terminology of tabs. And tabs are places in a document where a recipient provides input or a calculated value is displayed. And so on the left, we have this demonstration doc document and it has all these different tab types in it. So the sign here tab is the one that you're probably most familiar with if you've used DocuSign before, but we also have this date sign tab, we have some checkbox tabs, we have some text tabs and name tabs, and we'll go into more detail about all of these types. So to start off, I wanna look at tabs in the DocuSign web UI, just to make sure that everybody has the context that they need so that when we're looking into the code, it's pretty clear what we should expect to see in the web browser. And so this is an example document. It's a volunteer application and it has a bunch of tabs in it. And so you can see we have the sign here tab that I mentioned. We have the date sign tab, some checkbox tabs so that the user can input which dates they're available. We have some text tabs and the name tabs. And in the definition of tabs before, I mentioned how tabs are places where we collect user input, but also where calculated values are displayed. The name tabs here are a good example of a calculated value. And so instead of the recipient typing in their name here, it's going to take their name from their DocuSign account. The same is true with the date sign tab. So instead of entering today's date, it will know what today's date is and input that there. On the other hand, these tabs are where users can provide input and so they can enter whatever text they like. And it's really important to note that tabs are assigned to recipients and so all of these tabs are blue here. You can see my name in the corner also has a blue dot next to it. And that's because these tabs are assigned to me as the recipient. And so I'm a signer here. But if we want to add another recipient, we can do that. We have this approver already on the envelope and you'll see that all of these tabs turned yellow. And so if we want to add some tabs for the approver, we'll just scroll. Maybe we wanna have a place for them to approve. And maybe we also want their name. So we'll add those tabs there. And you can do that by either dragging the tabs like you saw me do, or maybe you just wanna click it. You can click the tab here and click where you wanna add it to the document. And another really great way to show how tabs are assigned to recipients is through the recipient preview. And so that's up here. I'll select this button. And here we are in the recipient preview where you can see what the document looks like as the recipient. And so our approver is looking at the document right now. You can see that the tabs that are relevant to them are only these two. But if we want to switch and view it as myself, the signer, we'll see that all of our tabs are here, the ones that the signer needs to interact with. And so my name has already been placed here. I'll enter my email. I can check some boxes to say when I'm available and click to sign. And so this is just, I think, a really good visual illustration of how tabs are connected to recipients. And that's gonna be important when we start looking at the JSON later on. And so that might've been very familiar to you. Maybe you've used our web UI before and you've sent documents and added tabs to them. I know this is our developer conference. So everyone here is probably interested in our APIs and you might be wondering, okay, how can I do the same thing programmatically? I want to build my documents programmatically. I want to customize them. How can I do that? And the answer is that you can do that with the eSignature REST API. 
The eSignature REST API allows you to integrate the DocuSign eSignature functionality into your own apps that you build. With the API, you can create documents and templates that have over 20 different types of tabs. And what I think is really great about the API is that not only can you make raw API calls, but we actually have SDK support in six different languages listed here. So in my code demo later on, I'm going to be using Bash, which is just a scripting language, but you can do the same thing in all of these languages as well. So the first thing I want to talk about in terms of tabs in the API is the anatomy of a tab. What is a tab? What makes up a tab? And we'll start by looking at the JSON. So here's an example of what a tab looks like in the JSON. And when you're using the API, you're going to want to pass this JSON as part of your request body. So you'll be creating an envelope definition, and that will have the tabs defined in it that look like this, and that will be passed as part of your API call. And so there are a lot of other properties that can appear here. Um, the important thing to note is the way the tabs are organized in lists of tabs of the same type. And so here we have the sign here tabs are in a list here. The text tabs are in a list here as well. And you might notice that these two tabs are using different types of positioning. We'll get more into that later on. So don't worry too much about that for now. So here we're highlighting that this is our list of sign here tabs. If we wanted to have another sign here tab, it would be part of this list here. We have the same with the text tab. So this part in red is the list of text tabs. If we had a third type of tab, we would just add that underneath. And here's an example of what it looks like when you have tabs of the same type, multiple tabs of the same type. So here we have two sign here tabs, and we've given them this tab label property to distinguish between them. So we have signature, we have our second signature, and they're both part of this one list of sign here tabs. And we've been talking a lot already about how tabs are assigned to recipients. This is what that looks like in the JSON. And so when you have your recipients as part of your envelope, you might have a list of signers. This could also be a different type of recipient, for example, carbon copies. And within the signer, you'll have your list of tabs. And so here's your tabs, and here's the sign here tabs within that. And another really important thing with tabs is positioning them in your document. So how do you do that? There are actually two options for positioning your tabs in the document. The first is fixed positioning. Fixed positioning, also known as app absolute positioning places a tab at a fixed location using the X position and Y position tab properties. And those are measured in a unit of points. There are about 3.5 points per millimeter in a document. And so you'll set that position using those two properties. And you'll also specify the document ID and the page number where you want the tab to appear. And if you switch out the document but have the same document ID, it doesn't matter what else is in the document, the tab is always going to appear in the same place. The other option, which I think I prefer, and I think a lot of other people prefer as well, is anchor tagging, also known as auto place. And so in this case, you're gonna use an anchor string. Our anchor string here is in this property, we're using slash SN1 slash. And this tab will be placed at every location where that string appears in the document. And so we picked kind of a unique string. You might not wanna use words that are commonly used because we don't wanna have tabs appearing all over the place where they don't belong. And then we also have these other properties which we'll get into in the code demo. So now I'm gonna demonstrate that we're gonna be using anchor positioning like I just mentioned. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. I'm actually demonstrating with some code that we have publicly available in our GitHub repository. And you'll have a link to that at the end of this presentation. So the example that I'm using is embedded signing. Embedded signing is when you are creating an envelope and this will generate a URL where the user can sign that envelope. And so if they're inside your app, you can give them the URL to click and sign and they'll be redirected right back to your app at the end. And so let's run it to start up here. We just have our script and this is where we're gonna be defining our envelope. This is the important part. But let's take a look at what happens to start. So here we are, we have our document. It has a couple tabs in it already, but we wanna add all of the other tabs that we saw in the web UI, so we're gonna do that. So we saw that we had the sign here tab, that's this one. I think we should start by looking at our text tabs. And the easiest way to do this is to just, we'll copy this, it's gonna be pretty similar. 
So we know we want to have two different text tabs in here. The first one is going to be our email address tab. So let's add a tab label so it makes sense which tab we're talking about here. We'll call it email address. And we'll change our anchor string. So how do we know what our anchor string is? This is really important. I have two documents that I'm using. So this is one of them. This is what it's going to look like when you are signing the document. You can see it's pretty clean. This is actually what the document looks like with all of the anchor strings showing. And so these are all different anchor strings that we can use to place our tabs in the document. And the trick that I really like to use is that these two documents both have the anchor strings. You just can't see them here because the text color has been changed to white so that they're just blending with the background. And so that way it's a little less cluttered when you add the tab, it doesn't necessarily cover half of the string and have half of the string showing. And we'll use this document to reference to just make sure we know what string we're looking for. So with the email address, we're looking for EA1. And so we'll add our string there. And then let's do the same for our text tab for the phone number. And this anchor string was PN1. And let's give it a new label. And we'll run this and see what happens. OK, so we have two tabs here. This isn't exactly what I envisioned, but they're both here. That's good news. I think that the first change that I would want to make is I would want these to be a little wider. And I also think that they should be aligned a little bit better with the text. So let's go back and try to fix that. And so the way that we align it how we want is using these anchor X and Y offset properties. And so those tell us how we want to offset the tab from the string. And I think it's the Y offset that's bothering us here. I think we should just remove it all together and see if that looks more like what we want. So we'll do it on both tabs. Here's our document. I think those look a little bit better, but we still need to work on the width. So let's go back. And we're going to add a width property. I'm going to set it to 100. I think that sounds like that will work. Let's do the same on both. This looks much better to me. This is kind of what I envisioned. So we can always type our email address in here. And then the sign here tab is here too. The one change that I do want to make is both of those tabs were required. I would like to make the phone number optional. Maybe people have a preferred method of communication. And so we're just going to add this required property and set it to false. OK, and then we also want to add some other tab types. And so the date sign tab was a big one. Let's do the same thing. I think we can still use this format. And I can't remember what our anchor string was, so we're going to look back at our reference document. It's D1, so let's go back, add that. And we don't need a width for this one. We'll give it a new label. And then let's do the name tabs too while we're here. So we're going to add a first name tab and a last name tab. And we need to set the anchor strings for these as well. So we'll double check our strings, FN1 and LN1. We'll add them here. And let's give these new labels just so we know what we're talking about when we're looking at these tabs. We don't need our width. Let's see what all those changes led to. OK, 
Okay, great. So our name is here, kind of how we want it. And we have our date signed down here. We have our sign here tab. And this tab is now optional. So we're going to be able to proceed without doing that. So we'll give it a try. Sign. We should be able to finish our document. Perfect. And this is giving us our response. So we did that correctly. So let's go back to the code. The last tab that we need to add is the rest of the checkbox tabs. So we have one for Sunday and we want to duplicate this for all of our days of the week. And so we're going to have to do this six more times. It's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then we'll change all of our labels. And then we need to change our anchor strings as well. And so let's go back to our document. Let's look at the strings. Okay, so they follow this pattern. So for Monday, we know it's XM. Tuesday was XTU, I believe. Wednesday was XW. Thursday, TH. Friday, F. Saturday, SA. Okay. Let's run it. Let's hope that was correct. It's a lot of changes right there. Okay, so you can see we did our, we ignored our Tuesday tab because we had the wrong anchor string. So we need to fix that. So our string is T, not T U. Let's go back to our Tuesday tab, get rid of the U. And so because we didn't see the tab anywhere, or we didn't see that string anywhere in the document, the tab just was ignored altogether. But now this should be what we want. Okay, perfect. This is exactly what we were looking for. So we have our text tabs, one is required, one is not. We can check our optional boxes for our availability. We can sign. We'll have to fill in this one. This one is required. And that's our document with all of our tabs in it. And so as you can see, I talked before about how you can add many different types of tabs. We could continue adding more types below this. We could also add another recipient to the envelope. So we have signers right now. We could add another section of carbon copies and add tabs to them, but the general approach would be the same. That's all for my demo today. We still have some time for Q&A. So I just wanna say thank you to everyone for attending this session and hopefully it was really helpful for you. Hopefully you're ready to go customize your documents and add tabs to your heart's desires. I see there are a bunch of great questions in here already. Um, I'll try to address some of them. Let me share my screen again. So the first thing I think is useful to show is the document. Someone asked about whether the anchor string will disappear, whether DocuSign will remove that when the tab is placed there. The answer is no. Um, that's why I have these two documents. So this is the one that I'm actually using in my script. And you can see there's no anchor strings visible, but they are there. Maybe you can tell by highlighting them. Um, maybe not, but I have this other document where they're visible. And so they're not being just covered up by the tabs. They're actually in white text in this other document, so you can't see them at all. And then the other thing I wanted to address that I saw was about the whether the anchor strings are case sensitive. So there's actually part of the API reference. This is a really great resource, by the way. If you go to the developer center, I can send a link to this too. You can see all the different tab types that we have. And under the create method, you can see that for each tab, there's this property anchor case sensitive. And so when you set this to true, then the string will be case sensitive. Otherwise it looks like the default is false. Let's check back on the questions. Is the embedded signature part of a demo that we can access as part of the trial? So this code is all on our developer center. Again, um, it's also in GitHub. I can show you where that is too.
Okay, so in the Developer Center, if you go to the eSignature API, we have a bunch of code examples here. And one of them is on the embedded siding. And so it's the same code that I'm using there. And you can find this, there'll be links to GitHub at the end of this how-to. Okay, some other questions. Somebody asked about a second recipient. I'll actually, I can do a demo. I have some, a tag prepared for a second recipient. So I'll do that. Okay, so this is the code we're using. Um, I have it prepared here, so I'll just copy it over. There's something in the way. Okay, so here's a tab definition for a second signer. And we'll just copy this back into what we have. And when we run this, I may have to stop sharing the screen a few times just to make sure. Okay, so we get the same response that we were seeing before. This is still the first signer, has all the same tabs. And I'll fill it out just to pass it on to the second signer. And so because I set the routing number for the second signer as two, they'll receive this in their inbox when I finish signing this. So I've done this. I'll stop sharing and I'll go get it from my email. And here it is as the second signer. And so you can see that all of the tabs from the first signer are here. I can see that they filled them in. I can see that they selected the check boxes for Sunday and Monday. And then down here is where I can approve. And that's my name, second signer, because that's what I said it is. Let's see if there's any follow-up questions to that. Can a tag be selected by default? So you can do that. You can, um, that's part of the, we'll have to look in the API reference to make sure, but there's a field that you can add to your checkbox tabs that will select that they're already on. So you can add some values in advance. I think that that's, we covered most of what's here. Um, there's some good links in the answers to these questions and I can add some more there as well. But like I mentioned, the, the API reference is gonna be really helpful. I'll share this again. So if you go to the developer center, you'll find all of this great information. We have a bunch of how-tos. We don't have one specifically mentioning tabs, but we have plenty that use tabs in them. Um, and then we also have the reference you can get to by scrolling to the bottom on the left here. And you can find all of the information about tabs under envelopes and envelope recipient tabs. And so there's way more information. There's tons of tab properties that I didn't cover here. Um, you can do a lot of different customization, but this is where you'll find all of that information. Okay. I don't think we're getting any other questions, so that might be it. Um, I'll stop sharing. And thank you for joining. Enjoy the rest of the conference.